The University of Manchester is the largest university in the UK and has four Nobel Prize winners on its staff. Within the university, the Faculty of Medicine and Human Sciences is the largest such faculty in Europe and the Institute of Brain Behaviour and Mental Health sits within that. We're a strongly interdisciplinary group of cognitive scientists, neuroscientists, academic psychologists, psychiatrists and social scientists who are all working together to try and tackle some of the big questions in mental health and neuroscience. The Institute has several key areas of translational research, dementia, developmental disorders, addictions, mood disorders, psychosis, are all key areas that we're addressing. My area of research is clinical psychiatry and it's in the area of early psychosis. So the first few years of schizophrenia and related psychotic disorders and it's an important area of research because this is the phase where a lot of disability can occur and so research in this area can allow us to prevent or minimise that disability. We're looking at a broad range of psychosocial interventions in addition to um, antipsychotic medication to improve people's lives. So these areas haven't really been researched before, things like exercise to improve people's functioning and symptoms, uh, return to work programs, um, but we're also looking at why these things might work. So we're looking at, well, does exercise work because it decreases inflammation? Does it work because it improves people's social lives? My research is focused on autism. One in a hundred children suffer from some form of autism and we know relatively little still about its real origins and um, we also don't know all that much about effective treatments yet. We have done the first really early what we call prodromal treatment trial in autism. So autism emerges at about three years of age and this period before autism really becomes identified has always been rather mysterious. And our developmental studies with infants at risk of developing autism has uncovered a lot of the very subtle early developmental problems that these children have. And we're just completing now the first treatment trial of an intervention in infancy, that's before the first year of life, to see if we can alter the developmental trajectory of, of these children at risk and maybe prevent some of the cases of autism developing. I'm very interested in exploring memory function and the brain structures that support memory function. And one of the areas um, of disease that I'm um, focusing on is, is the field of dementia and neurodegeneration. The Institute of Brain Behaviour and Mental Health at University of Manchester is undoubtedly the best place to do this research, not only because it, um, ha it has such breadth of expertise, but principally because Manchester has a, a, a huge population from which to draw multiple comorbidities, but also a population that is diverse in terms of its socio-economic background, diverse culturally. And it's very clear that understanding neurodegeneration and dementia today requires multidisciplinary science and a large population that is diverse and heterogeneous in this sense. What we research here is self-harm and suicide and we are primarily interested in the causes of suicidal behaviour, the treatment of suicidal behaviour and the prevention of suicidal behaviour. The most exciting thing from my point of view is that we do applied research and what that means is that the research we do is directly impacting on patients and service users and hopefully improving the care that they get. So for example, one of the things we've done is we've looked at psychiatric inpatient care and how it can be made safer. So things like a safer environment, uh, things like um, making sure patients don't leave wards without staff permission. And one, one of the things we've been able to demonstrate is that that's led to a big reduction in inpatient suicide. So something like a hundred fewer deaths per year in England on psychiatric inpatient wards. And that's, you know, that's a hundred lives saved. Our research is about trying to find better treatments for common psychiatric disorders like depression, addiction and schizophrenia. And uh, that has to be based on an understanding of what goes wrong in the brain in those disorders. And we do that using uh, innovative techniques like pharmaco-MRI, magnetic resonance imaging uh, and cognitive function tests and other measures of brain functioning.
My research is about using neurocognitive approaches, so using cognitive testing and brain imaging to understand affective mechanisms of mental health problems, looking at things like emotion regulation, motivation, impulsivity, social cognition, and how these processes break down in a range of common disorders. We're at the cutting edge of a number of technologies that come together in a very fruitful kind of way. Genes, molecular aspects of disease, through how the brain works in terms of uh, using brain imaging techniques. And we're particularly interested in finding how treatments affect brain functions. So we've developed a number of novel imaging techniques to directly image the effect of um, drug treatments and also um, psychological treatments as well. The Institute of Brain Behaviour Mental Health has grown a lot over the past three years and will continue to grow through internal and external investment and have managed to attract some key senior faculty from around the world. So working together in a culture of creative innovation, we're going to go a long way.